This is the pre-lab lecture for experiment number seven, column chromatography and UV visible spectroscopy of lycopene. The goal of this experiment is to isolate lycopene from tomato paste and then analyze it by UV visible spectroscopy. Number one, planning and preparation. I will collect and organize all the glassware and chemicals as you'll see in the videos. You need to read the end of the book sections on two new lab techniques. One is column chromatography and the other is ultraviolet visible spectroscopy. We're going to be working in the hood again today, wearing goggles and gloves. We're going to be using several different solvents, acetone, hexanes, and petroleum ether. Petroleum ether is just a mixture of hydrocarbons. It is not actually an ether. Our media for doing the column chromatography in this experiment is going to be alumina. We're also going to use some aqueous solutions to actually wash our lycopene extract. So here's the procedure. We're going to first separate the lycopene from the solids. So we're going to weigh out approximately four grams of tomato paste. And then we're going to pour on that some 50-50 acetone petroleum ether mixture and sort of mix it all up. And then all the organic materials that are soluble in acetone petroleum ether will solvate and leaving behind any of the solid materials that are in tomato paste. Two of the main ingredients that we will extract are going to be beta carotene and lycopene, plus some other carotenes that are in tomato paste. After we've separated the solids from the liquids, we're going to wash our liquid, our organic layer, with potassium carbonate, sodium chloride. That will help extract any inorganic materials out of that liquid solution. Then we will dry it with some sodium sulfate like we've done before. And then we will evaporate off the solvent and put that on a column to actually separate that. So part of this experiment is actually to make a column for doing column chromatography. We're going to pack that column with glass wool, sand, alumina, and sand, as shown over here on the right-hand side. So this is just a big glass column. And in this case, we're just going to use a burette, which is normally used for titrations. We're going to put some glass wool at the bottom to make sure that nothing of small particles from above can get into this valve down below. On top of the glass wall, we're going to put some sand, and that's just normal clean, dry sand that we've actually dried and cleaned. On top of that is our separation me media, which is going to be alumina. We could have used silica, just like we did for thin layer chromatography, but the alumina tends to separate out baric beta carotene and lycopene better, so we're going to use alumina. And on top of that alumina, we're going to put another layer of sand and then fill it all up with solvent. Okay? The reason we put the sand in there is so that we do not disturb the alumina. It is actually a very, very fine powder, and the sand is pretty coarse. So when we add things to the top of our column, we don't disturb that alumina. On top of the sand, we're then going to load our lycopene that we've evaporated down to a small amount of liquid. And then we're going to start op eluding, meaning we're going to open up this valve and we're going to start allowing the solvent to move through the alumina. As it moves through the alumina, it's going to start carrying organic materials with it, dragging them through the alumina based on the polarity and molecular size of these molecules. We're first going to elute with hexanes, which tends to move beta carotene faster than lycopene. Once we get the beta carotene to move through the column, then we're going to add a little bit of acetone to our hexanes, which tends to move lycopene through that column. So here's a schematic representation of the process. I take my lycopene, which has been concentrated, and I add it with a pasture pipette to the top of the column, right on top of the sand. And then I open up my stopcock down here at the bottom, 
and I start eluding it, meaning my solvent travels through and it starts pulling things with it. The beta carotene and some other carotenoids tend to move faster with hexanes through this alumina. So how fast things move, again, depends on their polarity and how they interact with the alumina. The lycopene tends to hold back and not move as fast. So as I keep on draining and adding hexanes to the top here, I eventually drain my beta carotene and these other carotenoids down and I collect them in a small beaker. I want to save these just in case I want to analyze these to see what's in them. At that point, I want to have my lycopene move faster, so I add a little bit of acetone to my hexanes, which makes it a little bit more polar. And my lycopene layer tends to move faster then. So I'm still draining solvent through my column and adding more solvent through the top. Eventually I get near the bottom, I place a beaker underneath my column, and I collect my sample of lycopene. At that point, I can go over to the UV visible spectrometer and analyze that lycopene that we have separated out from tomato paste. So, we, in the videos, you're going to see that I took a UV visible spectrum. Here's what it looks like graphed by me. Okay, And after we've done a UV visible spectrum, we're going to quickly then expose this sample to light because it undergoes a cis-trans isomerization and it could undergo some degradation based on the UV light interacting with molecules. And then we're going to rerun the UV visible spectra and we're going to do that every five minutes until we see a, a significant change in the UV visible spectrum. Notice there are several peaks here in the spectrum. If you were to look this spectrum up online, you'd see that this is a very characteristic spectrum with a high wavelength peak here at about 502 to 506 nanometers, and one here at about 475, and a second one here about 445 to 450. Here's what you're going to do for this experiment for a report. You're going to plot absorbance versus wavelength for the lycopene sample that was isolated from tomato paste. I have provided an Excel file with this data. So I have the absorbance data and the wavelength for those absorbances of the lycopene sample. From that data, you can calculate percent trans lycopene for this sample based on the methodology outlined in the lab manual. You're also then I want you to calculate the concentration of lycopene in the sample used for UV visible spectroscopy using Beer's law. So note that the sample length was one centimeter in this measurement and the molar extinction coefficient at 471 nanometers is 1.86 times 10 to the fifth liters per mole centimeters. Again, you're going to have to, again, use the absorbance at 471 nanometers to make this accurate. At that point, you can calculate the mass of lycopene in that cell. It says cell contains 3 milliliters of volume. So calculate that based on the concentration you calculated above. We're also going to plot the absorbance versus wavelength for the samples that were exposed to UV light. There are going to be seven spectra total, and I want those all on the same graph. So you're going to plot it for zero time, five minutes of UV visible exposure, 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30. And then explain the change in the spectrum as the sample is exposed to UV light. You might have to go to the literature to help you out. I have provided several literature articles on Blackboard also. Then I want you to plot the wavelength for the highest wavelength peak, the one at about approximately 506 nanometers as a function of UV exposure time and then explain the wavelength shift of the maximum peak. Again, you might have to go to the literature. And finally, plot the log of the absorbance of that highest wavelength peak again versus UV exposure time and explain that change in absorbance based on the provided articles. So your explanation for J might be very similar to your explanation for F. So there's a lot of plotting in this report. So make sure those plots are 
have all the information for a good graph, meaning labels, titles, etc. Okay. And so you're given essentially two weeks to do this experiment. And so this is going to be for weeks 9 through 10 of this course. 